Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, welcome to our SDG media conversation on advertising with purpose. My name is Jason Rose. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for SAP's Customer Experience line of business. And I'm really excited to be here today with a very auspicious panel to talk about our topic uh, today. Um, starting on the end, we have J.R. Kerr, uh, the founder of Handshake. Uh, welcome, uh, J.R. Um, we have uh, Donna Special, uh, the president of uh, Warner uh, Advertising Sales. Um, we have uh, Renee, uh, who is uh, with Global Citizen, and uh, Mary with Warner Media Impact. So welcome to our panelists. And maybe, why don't we start um, uh, with just maybe a quick introduction and a little bit about each one of your organizations and your role in delivering advertising with purpose. So why don't we start on the end, JR, maybe we'll start with you and work our way down. Absolutely, Handshake started about five years ago. We define uh, influence as the problem that a brand solves for consumers, the value they create for markets, and then the issue that they resolve for society. So we would suggest that if you don't link purpose or influence to your core brand, that you're, you have a thin reputation and long term, you're really gonna fall short. So we're with companies all over the place to build these kinds of platforms. Fantastic. Great. I'm Donna Speciali. I'm president of uh, Ad Sales for Warner Media, and um, you know we um, really started looking into um, focusing a lot of our efforts um, into um, what clients now are focusing on with cause marketing. Um, mm -hmm. We do a lot of conversations, meet with a lot of CMOs, and obviously doing a lot of their brand focus. But instead of it being more brand focused on purpose, it's now more about purpose of what's going on with society. I feel like we're in a really pivotal point mm -hmm. right now in society, especially with Gen Zs, and their focus of really having a cause and being so tied to brands that help their purpose of where they're focusing mm -hmm. on. Um, and we feel for our company, we started a division that Mary is now running called Impact to kind of help now clients with their brands push this effort out, because I think a lot of people are having the conversations within their own organizations, mm -hmm. but they're not pushing it out right. for, for brands to really get the elevation that they need with the connection to what they're doing. Right, makes sense. Great. Mm -hmm. Renee? So I'm Renee, I'm with Global Citizen, and we are, our mission is to end extreme poverty by 2030. Uh, we're tied very closely with the global goals which you see behind us, mm -hmm. and we work with brands to capture and, and amplify their voice on how they're helping to end extreme poverty. We have a, an app that people can download and take action. I ask all of you to do it. Mm -hmm. And actions are anything from a tweet, sending an email, calling your senators or representatives of government, uh, to ask them to do things like provide vaccines for children, keep girls in school, make sure people are fed, nobody goes hungry. So again, our, our platform is to uh, end extreme poverty, and we do that through advocacy and action. Uh, focusing on millennials uh, is our, our, our main target audience and uh, giving them a platform so that they can put their voice out there and, and share what they care about and then also providing the global brands that we work with a, a platform for them to uh, work with our audience as well and say here's what we're doing to end extreme poverty in the world. Great. So, so hi, I'm Mary Scully. I run the impact practice at Warner Media, formerly Turner. And Donna hired me a few years ago to work on the client strategy practice, which is to work with clients to help affect their KPIs. So as we started, Donna asked me to take a look into the CSR world, which is really the cause of the brand. And as we're doing that, we, I did not know this when I joined the company, but Ted Turner, 20 years ago, gave, 20, gave a billion dollars to the UN. And that started the UN partnerships, which eventually became the 17 Sustainable Development Goals the UN in conversation with, with, with partner states. So as we're looking into the cause of a business, we realize by also looking at our audiences and into trends that millennials and Gen Zs, especially Gen Zs, will not work for, buy from, or invest in a brand that doesn't have a cause and a purpose. At the same time, Larry Fink came out with that famous letter to all of his investors before Davos two years ago and said, if you don't have a purpose, we will not invest in you. So at that minute, I, I, it became clearly apparent that it wasn't the cause of a business, it's the business of cause. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about this, that everybody I have met in the first year and a half, I would say I met with over 80 brands and wow. many, many introductions from the UN, Everybody's really talking more internally. 
And many, many CEOs of your own, your own company, which we talked about how really super impressed I was with the work that, the work that, that SAP does, especially with the Leonardo Center in the work. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But the conversation and the commitments that the CEOs have aren't really communicated to the public. Enough. So in one of our pieces of research, it says that, <coughs> excuse me, 70% of consumers do not know what a brand's purpose is. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so, that, that, so, so here at this time, we're here to talk about this is what we want to start to move for brands. And, and as we do it, and we can cr help create the targets through our data, mm -hmm. help them understand what causes they should be activating, create the content, because we are content creators, mm -hmm. distribute and measure, uh, optimize the media for the greatest effect, and then measure the results for the brand. Because yeah. That's the whole point. What does the CMO do? How are they going to tell the brand purpose story if they're not selling their product? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So what has just happened is that if you don't tell brand service, you won't tell your product. Mm -hmm. And that's where, we, that's where we're convening today. And that's yeah. Fantastic. Well, Mary, uh, thank you for that. And uh, Donna, obviously you have a, a broad remit over uh, mm -hmm. the whole ad sales uh, area for uh, Warner Media. And from your macro point of view, um, and like you said, there's a generational shift happening yes. right now as well. How have you seen kind of your customer attitude towards um, you know mission, sustainability, and purpose evolve and change? Obviously, you're here on the panel today, yeah. so it's obviously something that's coming up more and more often. I'd love to get your perspective. It is. I mean, it's also for our own companies. You know, yeah. even our own company needs to you know figure out what its purpose is. And you know, now that we are part of AT and T. Mm -hmm. um, kind of really started resonating because now we have a lot of data um, that is going to actually be able to help a lot of clients. Some clients don't even know what their purpose actually needs to be right. um, for themselves that resonates with their consumers and or for their employees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now with at and it just, I mean, Mary and I have been kind of working on this literally for about a two year, year and a half practice, but now with at and it, the acquisition finally happening, um, <laughs> yeah. we are yeah. now, uh, you know, we now have a, a huge resource behind us that is going to help this. You know, what, what I'm seeing though is, um, you know, there's somewhat of a disconnect sometimes with marketers on where it sits, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's one of the reasons why we kind of started Impact is because, you know, Mary's now talking to different individuals in different, right, I'm sure you realize, in, in different companies because sometimes the individuals we talk to, whether it's a brand marketer, there's a disconnect yeah. um, between the divisions, um, and it's hard. And sometimes we're in the middle trying to bring it all together to try to get that message of that cause out amongst their whole company. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of like that middle mm -hmm. part to kind of bring it all together. We're helping them sometimes create um, their content because they don't have resources, and we have you know two content studios that'll help do that. Um, we have the data that helps them. Um, resonate on what it is that cause is also getting to the right, right. Um, viewer or consumer mm -hmm. who cares about that cause yeah. right I mean you don't want to go out too broad mm -hmm. um, in that space um, and we try to you know bring it full circle for them and, and try to show the results I mean, the key is is it working is it working right? is it working yeah. for that brand is it helping elevate the brand um, with, with what they're doing yeah, and I know for SAP, recently we changed our um, kind of approach as well to raise purpose more to the forefront with the best run businesses has always been kind of a traditional SAP statement, but the best run businesses make the world run better, right? Mm -hmm. um, and connecting our purpose, which is obviously efficiency and making companies the best that they can be, but connecting that back to the company's mission of making the world run better. JR, I know you're also kind of uh, with Handshake really helping organizations with this challenge as well. What are you seeing from your point of view? Obviously, you felt strongly enough that you founded uh, a company around this. Yeah, and I think that you know these three have said it in their own way, and I think it said it very well. Uh, I think there's a couple of things that are happening from our point of view from trends. Mm -hmm. So first, there's this move from global to local that's happening in people's expectations of business. This is actually not new. So, you know, this is this famous stoic idea that there's no new idea, right? And there is no new idea. And so the fact of the matter is, is that business started in local communities. Yeah, there was lines of credit for mom and pop and. Like businesses were the heart and soul of their communities, right? We then lost sight of that over the last hundred years. And in an age of populism, in an age of lack of trust of governments, who do you think people trust the most right now? Who do you think they expect the most out of? Their local CEO. They genuinely believe that business.
business is responsible to, to make, to your point, mm -hmm. good business run right, mm -hmm. does right by the people that it does business yeah. with, right? So the first thing we're seeing is this shift back to local. Mm -hmm. The second is, and I think you, you referenced, uh, or I can't remember which one of you said it, it's absolutely the Gen Ys and the Millennials, it's, it, it's not just them anymore. So yeah, right. there is yeah. this Gen Z that is coming, but even more so, all of the data shows, um, and these guys have tons of data, is that Gen Z and Gen Y are influencing who? Yeah. Mom and dad. Right. Yeah. So what's happening is Absolutely. over the last 15 years, we've consistently seen the older generations increase their purpose-driven mm -hmm. decision-making. So now your largest sum of resource, right, which is still here, is now being deeply influenced there. And I think the last thing we've seen is that it's less about the tertiary parts of the company, and it's far more about the core. Right. You have to yes. get after what about your business model. Yeah is like actually should be transformed or is transforming. When you get to that point, two things happen. Number one, your talent pool, yeah. which they absolutely expect yes. this now. Yes. Yes. Talent is yes. to dramatically transform, yeah. but consumers are smart, man. Yeah. And they will tell you that it's not authentic. Yeah. So I think yeah. these are the trends that we're seeing and trying to help companies navigate that is, you know, it's a great privilege and honor and really fun to do. Well, so. and to your point, it needs to be a part of the ethos. Right, Absolutely. it can't just be a marketing program yeah. or campaign or an advertising yeah. um, piece of work. And Renee, I think it's actually really interesting that you, uh, representing Global Citizen, um, are right in the heart of uh, purpose and um, kind of driving change in the world uh, by uh, eliminating extreme poverty. So, what have you been seeing in terms of companies and organizations either approaching you or how you're working with the uh, business community at large? It's been really wonderful, the partners that we do work with. Um, we, we work with some of the world's best brands. And one of the things, back to your point of authenticity, that's really important for Global Citizen. We have that Gen Y, Gen Z audience, and, and they can smell inauthenticity oh, you know, a mile away. Yeah. So, <laughs> One of the things that we work with our brands really closely on is ensuring that when you come to us and use our platform, whether it's on the stage at one of our festivals, you're producing content, you're creating an action with us, it needs to be real and it needs to be material. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we found is that when, you know, Johnson & Johnson is one of, one of our best clients, mm -hmm. we love all our clients, but one of the things that they do really well with us uh, is uh, content and they work very closely with us and we have an excellent editorial team, but one of the things that we do is say, here's a story you're trying to tell, we're gonna translate it for our audience, mm -hmm. help you find that really core message that you're trying to push out there, and then we get great engagement. And we've had you know, stories go, you know, I, I don't like to say the word viral, but we've had great pickup on mm -hmm. stories that are meaningful and impactful and have that human connection. And one of the things that we try to tell the brands that we work with is you have to be human. The actions that we put on our platform have to be material, and that's, right. that's one of our, um, Kind of guiding principles is when we put an action on the Global Citizen website, it needs to have an impact, it needs to be measurable. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Global Citizen is also doing is working closely to audit our process and audit mm -hmm. our impact to say, at the end of the day, we're, we're in the middle of a, a, a series of case studies right now to say, here's how many lives were impacted and here's a person and here's their story. And that ties that loop from you know the Johnson Johnson education video that we did on universal healthcare down to the person who's receiving mm. those polio vaccines, and it's just it's amazing to see it come full circle. So fantastic. Yeah. Well, and, and you use the word impact a few mm -hmm. times, which I think is really interesting. Um, as you know, Mary and the uh, Warner Media Impact team are uh, focused in this area. And Mary, I was wondering. How did your team get involved? Obviously, you know, Donna, you've got kind of the overall kind of touch everything, right? right. And then you're kind of uh, very focused in this impact area. Tell us a little bit about how all that kind of works together. So it's, it's really what I keep hearing from all the different concerns and all, like we could have a consortium of all of us working together on, the, on, on impact, right? Because we all have basically the same need, which is to tell an authentic, relevant, timely story to our consumers. They have to believe in what we're doing. So it was in all of this research that we were doing with, with brands, with, with a brand partner that helped us understand. First of all, we did the, the research on Gen Z's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was, they will not talk to you unless you have this purpose. So it, it became, it really started, it, 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 I really don't have like a linear answer to that. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really struggling, but it's like, it was a circular conversation, mm -hmm. right? Because we were formed as a team client strategy to help our, our, our CEOs 
achieve their marketing KPIs. Right. So we to be a trusted advisor to our brands. We have amazing data, and we're a great storyteller. Mm -hmm. And if you think about telling a story with a CNN handle, it's way more well received than with a brand handle. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's number one. Number two, in the first year now. CSR has always been about the charity of the brand. Mm -hmm. So that's changing. In the first year, one of our clients came to us and they wanted to tell stories in 27, at the end of 2017. It was a tough year for this country, if you will, and they wanted to tell stories of good. So we created, we created four videos with them about, we used our social listening tool to understand what were the most important and trending stories to tell. So we've created four stories. And we have an award-winning brand, brand studio called Courageous. And they, 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 they would produce and distributed these videos. And they were the highest, in, so we have the most engaged branded mm -hmm. content in the business, mm -hmm. is that still? Mm -hmm. And so a great big story is our brand and content mm -hmm. distribution channel for CNN. So they have the highest engagement almost in the business. Mm -hmm. So when we distributed these stories, it was called, I'm going to just say it was, for, it was for Mass Mutual, it was called The Unsung. And it was a really beautiful mm -hmm. campaign. It was called, you know, I'll Stand By You was the song. Mm -hmm. But this campaign was 77% more engaged than the average GBS wow. um, branded story, right? So if you think about it, so if, you're, if we're taking and, and, and we're still in the meantime building the targets for, for, for cause. So if you take a, a cause-based story and you distribute it to someone who really is engaged, which we found we've located, located so far only 300 million of them yet globally, <laughs> still working on it. Yeah. And so you think about what's to come in the future. So that's the conversation we've been having. But to go back to the beginning, brands and sustainability people at companies are not really talking to the CMO, it's like mm -hmm. to the CEO, and it was like, mm -hmm. it used to be, okay, go down that hall because you're talking about CSR and that's my charity. Right. Now it's CMO and CEO need to be talking because they better return the investment that CEO is making in the world and in sustainability, yeah. right? So every brand who makes or does something is a negative, so they have to balance out, that's what sustainability is, but to balance out the, the positive. So, there's just so much of a story to tell. Poor Donna, like I could just. <laughs> no, I think I think listen. I think we found a, a key insight that um, in the past, I would say, few years, a CMO focusing on their brand goals and their brand priority. Mm -hmm. That's still important. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're realizing that they have to connect that to a brand purpose. Yes. Right. And that's the connection and the thread yes. that we kind of had an aha moment. Right. And this mass mutual um, event that Mary's talking about, um, we kind of had in, we were intuitively new, mm -hmm. but until it really we really put it together and we saw the results, we we're like, you know what? Yeah. There's more to this, and we really just started diving in, and it just you know again, we had all the pieces, mm -hmm. and, and even our, even within our own worlds, the pieces probably weren't all connecting. We weren't probably all connecting it to this, yeah. and we then had, had that aha moment going, oh well, we can actually help right. a lot in this space with clients that we didn't even know we had. Yeah, yeah. I think that the, the thing that you just touched on, I think, is really important. Is that like historically we thought about marketing in two ways, right? So we thought about marketing in terms of product marketing, mm -hmm. right. and then we thought about product. We thought about marketing in terms of enter enterprise brand, right. and I think. To the point that you just made, yeah. I think you all are actually uniquely positioned. Actually, both both brands represented mm -hmm. here are uniquely positioned to connect the two. Mm -hmm. I would suggest there's never been a strong brand, enterprise brand, that hasn't had a purpose. Mm -hmm. The disconnect, I think, with purpose has been to the product on the product level. Right. We've had a generation of marketers who have just been selling shit. Like yeah. just I'm just gonna sell it, right? And now what's happening is is people are saying, no, no, no. I want to know what's your enterprise brand. Right. Tell me about that long-term reputation yeah. because Absolutely. that's what's going to be here in 50 it's years. This product may come or go. Yeah, and right. when you can connect that, yeah. that's genuinely rare influence. I think you all are uniquely positioned to do that. Well, and that's what the loyalty will come to of that course. brand. That's right. They will stick with that brand through huge generations, through product launches, yeah. if, if, they, if that connection is So we have a client that calls it the hero product. And yeah. we've really started to study this idea of the hero product. and. We were trying to help them redefine the hero product as what what is a true hero, right? And what, what we found from all the research is that a young person who buys the hero product at age 12 because it solves a real problem for them may not buy that exact same product when they're 35, 
but they will buy it from the same, they yes. will buy something from that mm -hmm. brand in 20 yeah. plus yeah. years yeah. because you connected to a purpose and something meaningful for them. Okay. It's a really powerful reason. So um, we only have a few minutes left, um, but what I thought is, I mean, many of you out there watching are probably wondering, where do I get started on this journey, right? Especially um, if you're in the marketing department, you're going, this is resonating, but how do I have that initial conversation with my CEO, my head of sales, right? Um, so why don't we go down the line and I'd love to get a piece of advice you would give to the audience of where do we get started and how do we surface this and how do we make it part of our core versus a marketing campaign. Jared, why don't we start with you and we'll work My grandma was an immigrant, uh, a, an entrepreneurial woman from Nicaragua and she gave me two pieces of advice that I think are entirely relevant for this. Do your homework and start small. Mm -hmm. So if you're a marketer or a CMO or head of like CCO, look at the data. The data inevitably will give you some indicator that there's a reason to do this and then do it for a very specific audience with a very specific timeline and then get a win. And then do that a couple of times and you'll be amazed at how fast the flywheel picks up. Awesome. Um, agreed. I think, um, you know, I take it, flip it from an employee perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if marketers right now don't know yet um, where they think that the purpose should be, um, maybe look within your own walls mm -hmm. um, to see what's happening, <laughs> right? right. Um, yeah, um, your employee base. And again, I think there's a lot of data now that you can go in and see what is resonating. Um, there's de definitely different generations, um, you know, within corporations. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think if you can go within your own walls first and see what's resonating, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the easiest. And to your point, start small before you go big. Yeah. Um, you know. Crawl, 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 run, um, and then take it from that level. Fantastic. Renee? Yeah, I would say, you know, from a CSR standpoint, from the employee side, we've noticed that too. We've had a lot of organizations come to us and say, how do we get this started? And what, what we like to say is, have alignment internally. Sometimes there's mission statements and value statements and internal yeah, <laughs> codes of ethics and things. And, and yeah. you know, we were working with one of our brands, and they I said, what, what are your values? What do you want to push out into the world? So that, when, you know, the things that connect to an SDG, and they couldn't answer it. And it was, well, they brought their mission statement back, and I said, that's true to your product that mm -hmm. you're selling, but what is the heart? What's the heart of your organization? And yeah. that's, you need to define that. Mm -hmm. And that's bringing everyone together, that's asking your, your employees, that's asking how external people see you, and that's aligning around one thing. You know, it could be more than one, but I think just having one core value, yeah. linking it back to one of these SDGs is probably the fastest thing you can do, is to mm -hmm. say, which of these do we think is yeah. the most important thing in the world? Come together on that, and then go from there. No, I love it. It's, it's a focal point, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. if people talk about priorities, and they often have multiple priorities, but in this case, having a single focal point can mm -hmm. really help concentrate the effort. I think that's a great piece of advice. Mary, how about, how about yourself? So I think that every brand definitely has a conversation to be had about one particular goal. Mm -hmm. Many brands invest in many goals, and we like that our company like number 17 because it's a partnership for the goals that we're mm -hmm. creating in partnerships. But my advice would be to have the sustainability person start a sustainability conversation mm -hmm. in the company. And what do you, like, ask, well, what is it we need? Like, what is my CEO's challenge and what are we trying to do to help bring back sustainability to the world and create a conversation where they a brand should work with one of us to help advise target determine just dis create distribute and measure it's a it's a mm -hmm. big process but if you do it again like jr said start small start mm -hmm. with one mm -hmm. we saw engagement that was off the charts for one brand yeah. and that's our white paper mm -hmm. okay yeah so, and you know, we've been talking to, to, to your, to your mm -hmm. team for a long time, and I've known JR for a long time, and I've known about Global <laughs> Citizen for my job, but, but it's, it's really important work. It used to be just, oh, this is great, we have a cause. Mm -hmm. Now, cause and purpose mm -hmm. are much more important. It's like the brand used to talk about what their offering was, what's their brand quality, and now it has to be a conversation about the brand purpose. Not every brand is perfect, yeah. but even if you're diminishing something from the earth by creating a good, or if you're a plastics company like Pepsi, you still should be able to tell the story of what you're doing to come back to recreate sustainability for plastic. I mean, yeah. it's that simple. And it has to start, you can't just come off and say, oh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. You yeah. have to start, yeah. start small. And I think this consortium, with all we do, can really help. Excellent. So, pause. Good. Well. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much for uh, tuning in today for a discussion on From Advertising to Purpose. I think this was an incredible discussion. Hopefully you've taken away some um, actions that you can take back and uh, apply in your day-to-day -day world. A very special thanks, JR, Donna, Renee, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us today. So and uh, really, uh, we'll look forward to talking again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.